As soon as you leave behind the blue of the ocean, the only blue that endures is that of the skies over the vast expanses of the Moroccan Kingdom. Between the mountains of the Middle Atlas and the Sahara Desert, there is little water, making the color blue a rare thing. The infinite richness of this land is made up of wadis, rivers, flowing from the mountains before winding listlessly through the bottom of small valleys. Between Wazazat and Beni Malal, water flows from the northern slopes of the Atlas, coloring the stone and sand of the desert blue. In a natural basin, man has built a dam to irrigate the surrounding land and to supply a large part of the country with electricity. At 800 meters above sea level, in the foothills of the mountains, the lake formed by the Bin El Widan Dam is the blue which brings life. The region's main attraction, local guide Hamid takes people to visit the lake. The Bin El Widan Dam was built in 1954, in the period of the French protectorate, and this lake was the result. Bin El Widan means between two rivers. This is the mouth of the Ahansal River, which flows into the Bin El Widan Lake. Over the years, this wadi has carried along rocks, which has given rise to the gorges that you see here. From the river mouth, the river cuts through a narrow, deep gorge, which bears witness to the constant process of erosion by the water on the limestone and red clay. This old kasbah that you can see on the clifftop once served as a bank for the villagers. Each family deposited a coin to store their goods or food in this fortified granary. And the families took it in turns to guard the place from thieves. Since the creation of the lake, the authorities have introduced pike, zander, roach and perch. These fish-rich waters provide a livelihood for several local fishermen who can find some impressive carp on the end of their lines. Have you seen any carp in the area? I saw some jumping a while ago. Oh, that's a nice one. Very nice. Very nice. Without the lake, there wouldn't be any hotels or work here. Everything I do is linked to the lake. This lake is very beneficial for the region, whether from a tourism point of view or for irrigation of the nearby plains. Over time, the tranquility of the Bin El Widan Lake has attracted Moroccan tourists. People come from Casablanca and elsewhere to practice various water sports or recreational fishing on this vast expanse of water.
covering an area of 40 square kilometers, Bin El Widan Lake has also allowed the exploitation of huge tracts of fertile land and thus contributes to the economic development of the whole province. Around the lake, other gorges invite one to move north in search of another blue. In the north of the kingdom, at the foot of the Rif mountain range, the town of Chefchouen is known as the Blue Town. In the Medina, the narrow streets and houses are entirely painted in a whole range of blues, from sky blue to deep indigo. In Chefchouen, the walls of the town are repainted several times a year as a way of announcing religious festivals. The women, who are responsible for this work, are endlessly colouring the walls, doors and frames with an intense blue. Every Friday, the woman of Chef Shawan wakes up in the morning, and she does that, whatever the weather, mainly in spring and in summer. This practice goes back several centuries to when the Sephardic Jews, driven out of Andalusia, began to paint the arcades of their houses to protect themselves from the evil eye. Since then, blue has spread throughout the Medina, and in the end, the whole town adopted this color. Look at that one. You look great, don't you think? It's the Medina from morning till night. It's the alleyways of the Medina, it's games in the Medina, the people of the Medina. Only one thing counts, the Medina. Adnan, a French teacher at Chef Shawan High School, spends his free time photographing the vibrant blue world of the Medina, where he's always lived. Photography is his passion, and it has enriched his life. It has taught me a lot. It taught me the notion of colors and of light. It also taught me to focus on details. And in fact, since I've been doing photography, I have rediscovered Chef Shawin. For me, every day there is something new. There's always a fresh light. There's always... It's become my passion, the combination of Chef Shawin and photography. We're here with Mr. Abdul Wahed, who is a carpenter and who makes the town's doorways, which have become the symbol of the town. When you arrive in the town, there is a gateway and another on the way out, and he tries to replicate these same doors. I feel at home in this workshop, with the smell of the wood, the sound of the hammer. It takes me back to my childhood, to my memories. Far from the oasis of Chef Shawen, 
the center of Morocco exhibits the rustic nature of the land and the mountains. A land of fault lines with a complex geological history, the ancient folds of the high Atlas mountain range form a desert of rock. For almost 700 kilometers, the dark rocks of granite and basalt give their colors to this extreme world, which already foretells the aridity of the nearby Sahara. In the foothills of the Anti-Atlas, near the town of Tafraut, one man wanted to create a more magical desert. In 1984, the Belgian artist Jean Verham decided to paint this uniform desert by adding what for him was an essential color, that of the sky and the sea. At 1,200 meters above sea level, on the fringes of the inhabited world, Jean Verham found a canvas on the scale of the landscape to create a monumental work. Over three months, some 30 people applied more than 18 tons of blue paint to transform this hostile desert into a supernatural oasis. Since then, the inhabitants of Tafraut have regularly come to maintain this blue, which keeps the evil eye at bay. This outsized work has given the site a logical new name, the Blue Rocks. Soon, the artificial blue painted by man on the rocks of Trafraut gives way to the natural blue of the sea along more than 3,600 kilometers of coastline. Between Rabat, Casablanca and El Jadida, a colorful throng comes to picnic here at weekends on the beaches of fine sand against the backdrop of the ocean waves. In the mouth of a river, a ship has run aground. The sand-covered wreck bears silent testimony to the violence the ocean can unleash. At times, the sunlight, the wind, and the sea put on a grand spectacle. Like in the theater, some take a front row seat to better appreciate the show. From the blue of the sea, some find little treasures which have no great value, but which inspire them. Like Khalid El Grib, an artist who spends hours ferreting around the port of Azila in the north of Morocco. Among all sorts of flotsam, he's looking for scraps of color, of material and shapes abandoned by people. 
The kind of object that attracts me is not granite, it's not marble, it's not iron, that's not it. The objects that attract me are fragile. A piece of wood eaten by insects. That's the kind of thing I'm after. Fragile things. From nothing, Khaled El Grib creates ephemeral objects which raise questions about time and its effect on both materials and people. Inspired by Far Eastern philosophy, his creations are spontaneous, playful, and fragile. What I do is closer to a spiritual practice. Not religious, but spiritual. I'm interested in reflecting the inner vibrations. That's what I'm after. The end result doesn't interest me because I don't have any involvement with the public, nor with galleries or museums, nothing. It's not a matter of earning a living either. I just do what I have to do. The coastal citadel of Azila has the particularity of welcoming people of a certain sensibility, thinkers, writers, and illustrators from across Europe. It is the hometown of Khalil, a retired teacher who is considered a leading light among contemporary artists in Morocco. In his workshop, he has amassed a precious and astonishing haul. Cloth, paper, wood, Khalil observes the deterioration and decomposition of objects and materials in this damp environment. For him, it's not art, just an essential activity. What's that? I don't know. It's a statuette. It's an objet d'art. Or maybe... The aim is not to create a work of art. It's not to create a concept or an idea. Just a slightly special behaviour. Existential and metaphysical, and which retains a good percentage of bitterness. That's it. Heading east, vast expanses of wheat appear. This is the granary of Morocco, where its cereal is cultivated. Over more than five million hectares, the only blue to be seen is the standard color of the wheat sacks. there is an extraordinary blue, intense and bright, an essential element of a garden. It is majorel blue, a luminous blue which covers the walls of a villa and all the exterior design features. It's a blue you find when you travel in the south of Morocco, the blue you find on the doors and windows. It's also the blue of the Touareg's turbans. The French painter Jacques Majorelle introduced this colour into his garden to contrast with the colours of the paints. It's a vibrant blue which is lit up by the lovely light of Marrakech. It's hard to transpose it elsewhere, but here it comes into its own. For Majorel, another colour had to be added to this garden. It was his living canvas, as he used to say. Quito Fierro, head of the Majorel garden, runs a team of some 15 permanent gardeners who tend some 1,800 sorts of cactus, tropical flowers, banana palms and giant ferns, plus 400 palm trees which comprise this bewitching place. For Yves Saint Laurent, 
this garden was an inexhaustible source of inspiration. The 1930s Art Deco house and gardens of Jacques Majorel are today among the most visited sites in Morocco. People come here to admire the intensity of this blue brought from the south of the country and the botanical garden a haven call in the Red City. In 1927, the great aviation adventure of Aeropostale began. Saint-Exupéry, Mermoz and Guillaume were among many who took off from Toulouse to fly over the beaches of Morocco's Atlantic coast. With their legendary planes, they headed for Africa to deliver mail as far away as Saint Louis and Dakar in Senegal. Flying at low altitude, often through sea mists and without radio communication, the pilots wrote a new chapter in aviation history over these beaches. The Latico airplanes are long gone, but others still brave the skies. They play with the winds for a little airborne adventure above a unique landscape. This is home to Nigel, a Briton who's moved here to fly. Obviously, the scenery is beautiful, although I've seen it a thousand times, but uh, because we are a couple of kilometers away from the sea, we do get uh, thermic conditions, which makes the, the flying interesting. It's, uh, we're flying in thermic conditions. They're never the same two days. A 120 kilometers south of Agadir, on a 280 meter hill overlooking the ocean, Nigel has set up a takeoff site. Nigel used to run a restaurant in England, but one day left for an adventure traveling around Morocco, finally winding up here, a place with few tourists, but ideal for flying. I had a large camping car and I'd been traveling around for many years and I'd been coming to this part of the country. It's a beautiful part of the country and it's still, uh, still unspoilt. And I decided I needed to do some form of job, so I, uh, I decided that I'd try my passion of paragliding and we bought the land and uh, we have what you see now. Due to the topography of the ground and the weather conditions um, uh, during our season, which is really from middle of September till April, um, we, we, we do have uh, quite consistent conditions. It is, it is used by uh, many, many European schools. We have all, all the European uh, countries come here, including the former Eastern Bloc. We get a lot of polls, checks. It's very traditional Berber up here, but it really isn't a problem for tourism. The people are friendly. Um, it, it really is a beautiful part of the country and, and relatively unspoilt, even in the summer months that the beaches are empty. Nigel flies whenever the conditions permit. His job is a passion, the freedom to touch the blue of Morocco, that of the skies and that of the ocean. Thank mm -hmm. you.